When we found this 1972 411, it was clear to us that it was never going to run again. There was no motor, no trans, really no value, and definitely no popularity. So I found, I looked, I got a Subaru, a non-turbo version, um, but it was a stick shift, all-wheel drive. It was what we could afford. I parked them next to each other, and I started measuring. This engine and all this stuff will be mostly where it is. It's going to fit in here. It's going to go between that and that. And then obviously the track width is a bit wider. So if you look at these two cars, that one is considerably wider. Um, and the wheels are probably gonna stick out of the bodywork over here somewhere. But I don't care about that because I'll put fender flares on it and it'll look like it has really wide tires and honestly that's what I'm going for. One of the first things I needed to do was dismantle the Subaru and get it down to a usable floor pan. That's what I did and then I test drove it. needs to be made, the linkage needs to be connected for Parker version of the drive sport. Um, we need to decide about paddle shifters if that's happening. We need to get the air conditioning stuff in. It's not here yet. Uh, there's a bunch of other stuff that's not here. But now that I've heard it run and I've seen it in place, um, we're a lot closer and this thing's now center stage. So I'll tell you what really stinks, working on your own car, vehicle maintenance. Ugh. I know it seems crazy because I work on stuff all the time and that's cool, I like building stuff. But just regular maintenance, especially on a GM product, it's the worst. Looks fine, doesn't need anything. It rolls, it must work, it's fine, forget it. This place isn't normally this messy, but it is because I have the cut up Subaru Forester ready or darn near to go underneath this thing. And I've got to get this interior and floor pan cut out so that it'll fit over top of this. And I still have a couple inches to remove um, and fine tune once I figure out how I'm going to chop this out underneath hollow and pick it up. So that's really what's going on right now. The place is a mess. You should have seen it yesterday. This is way cleaner. So hang on a second and let me get this interior stripped. I'll get the other camera set up. And we'll get some work done. start hollowing out the center now because this back is staying that structure I'm gonna leave that I'm probably gonna have to trim that one away um, all this is loose but it's not going anywhere so I can start cutting all this out a little at a time same with all this Flintstone. An interesting thing about this Subaru, when I cut the body off of it, it kind of wanted to fold in half. So I added some braces and you know, it's good now. But this thing is more like a tank. I get it, it it's, resembles a, a, a Volkswagen Beetle, 
But you know what? I really, I don't, I don't like this vehicle at all because look at it. I mean, here, let's go in here first of all, but look at the girder. Look at the size of that steel piece that carries this suspension. I'm going to have to try and unbolt it before I cut it out. And then all of this has to get cut out. This, this is one of those deals where it sounded like a good idea until I had to lay on the ground and cut this pile of crap into bits. It'll be fine once I get it hollowed out. But with all of these interior ducts that carried warm air, we're not even going to call it heat, it's filled with mouse piss and chewed up insulation and just nasty old tar. You'd be surprised how bad it smells. It's tough. I like it when I'm able to clean up. You know, I'm very uh, reactive to the weather. If it's nice outside, I'm in a good mood. If it's raining and cold, I'm just angry. <laughs> uh, typical, honestly. But uh, check this out. So I'm worried, you know, about the weight of this thing and will it crumble and, you know, would the bumpers hold it? What kind of strap? But here, check this out. So I don't think I have to worry too much. <laughs> it's not very heavy. <laughs> now granted, there's some weight on the front. It's probably teetering a bit, but um, at any rate, I don't, I don't have to worry too much. I got to trim uh, and get the front suspension, but yeah. And another one hangs in the air. Now, I knew this one would hang because that Jeep Wagoneer body hung this exact same way and the garage didn't come crashing down. So I knew this would do it. Um, it's balanced and there's still a lot to cut out, but I got a lot cut out. Master muffler on it and I changed the spark plugs and it seems like we've got the idle pretty dang good let's hear how it sounds now watch that throttle body it idles perfect like it didn't take very long but let me tell you there are more days involved in getting the shell cut out of the Volkswagen um, the Subaru was pretty straightforward I did have to shore it up in spots because 
Um, once I got the main structure off, the whole floor pan wanted to go like this. And what I didn't want to happen was to have it collapse in the center, ruining the drive line and all the brake lines, and um, then it would just be a big mess. I probably would have scrapped it. So I, I thought ahead and I, I shorted it up. It's all good. Um, <clears throat> this body is sitting on a couple of points, on four points and it's not in exactly the right spot. It needs to go forward just a little bit, um, and I'm also gonna come down in the front end, but I mean, the, the reality is, it's a car again, uh, most of it. I wouldn't drive it, but I'm gonna drive it. By the end of this video, this is going outside, and I want wheels a-spinning. We'll clean up some of the strap damage after I get this thing rolling. This is one of those deals where I ask myself constantly, why did I do this? What is the purpose of this? Um, it seemed like a good idea while I was clicking around and having beers on the internet. I get it all home, I start cutting it up, I'm excited, and then when the reality of how much work it was set in, man, somewhere in all of this mess is a very fun thing to drive. And you wanna know how I know it's a fun thing to drive? Because I drove the Subaru with no body on it and it's ridiculous, it's hilarious. Um, <clears throat> we get this body put back on proper and throw some seats in it. There you go. Original hood latch cable, I saved it. This is on a torsion spring that needs to be welded to the chassis and, and that'll stay up on its own. So for right now, there you go. But basically this is a fuel injected boxer four cylinder, uh, makes 165 horse, it's got ABS, um, it runs great, it's got good exhaust, it's had a whole bunch of work done to it. So really it should stay running for several years. I'm super happy about the idea of it, but the execution, you know, the way that I put it together, it's okay. It's going to take a ton of hours to get this thing stitched in all the way around and then I have to build some sort of box in the back. But uh, let me get this moving. Um, I want to get the body forward about an inch and a half and I want the front down about another inch. I could go even two maybe. Um, but I, I got to get it repositioned, so that requires hooking it back up and uh, doing a bunch of messing around that's probably not interesting to watch. So hang on one second, and we'll get this thing set in where I want it. All right, I reset the height and got the wheel well centered. I may go up in the back. I'm not sure. I might raise it a little, but... Overall, I'm pretty content with that. Now I can start working on that dashboard, tack this system in, weld it in a few spots so I can throw a seat in it and take it outside and smash the pedal. <laughs> but it's fun. Oh boy, there it is. Look at that little four wheel drive nonsense. That thing's freaking sweet. Well, it will be once I weld it together because, you know, you can see daylight through every frickin' seam of the thing. But I think overall it's going to be a fun, ridiculous little thing. I've already got the grill openings planned out. That's not even a problem. I got to do that, which is the fuel filler neck. But I mean, overall, this thing is awesome. Of course, the rocker panels all the way along the bottom, the trim and the roof rack. But yeah, I'm stoked. I'm, I'm completely content with that. I have been working on this thing for so many days that I was frustrated and tired of cutting and eating sheet metal. Um, the grinding discs. I feel like I smoked 15 packs of cools. But, um, so I'll get to the interior. I put this roof rack on and I put the rest of the molding on the side because I wanted to do something different. Another thing I need to do, if you look at this glass, it looks foggy. 
And the reason is this was parked near the ocean in Georgia, I'm assuming, because it's sandblasted. Not only the finish, but the glass is literally sandblasted. Um, so it's, it's very, it's almost like bumpy. It's common. Um, with vehicles that are stored down there. Now I did a, a quick half-ass polish on that one piece of glass and if you can see the difference, I didn't even do it very good. I just wanted to see if it would work and it did work. So I'm gonna polish all this glass. I need to get my uh, cutting compound and the polisher out. I'm gonna do this real quick and uh, in a few moments, I'll show you the results. And then I've got a couple other little items I wanna add to the body just so I don't have to crawl inside and eat more grinding discs, but yeah, you know, a lot of people are like, why are you doing this? And I keep asking myself that same question, but these vehicles find me. And when they find me, I have to do these things. I'm almost compelled, it's ridiculous, but I know it'll be fun. Won't be, but an, another couple of weeks, hopefully by the end of this episode, we will be driving this thing to go buy beer. Uh, shifting gears and drinking beers. Have you ever heard the phrase, you can polish money into a car? Well, you can with this. It's a mild cut compound, so you need to know how to use it, uh, or you could end up damaging your paint. And I'm not affiliated with this, but this product is my go-to when I want to clean something. Um, old dull paint, or even polish glass. Look at that. Now that's a huge difference. And I, I honestly, what do I got in it? Maybe an hour. If I wanted to spend more time, it would be even better. Um, but I'm happy with the results because you can see out of it now. And I don't want it to look brand new. The rubber's not brand new. But yeah, it's, it's really, really good now. So, yeah. So what I use is a variable speed and it's very important to be able to control your speed on one of these and it's not an orbital but you can use orbital this is just actually it's just a polishing pad uh, and use water it makes a heck of a mess but it's worth it when you clean it up so i'm pretty stoked about that and the next thing i need to do is get the dashboard in once i get the dash in weld a couple of spots in the front a couple of spots in the middle um, i can put a seat in it and drive it which i know you're waiting for and so am i wait till you hear it with the exhaust i don't even know did we do that already i'm not sure but yeah if you haven't seen it with the, the exhaust this thing sounds great well that don't look too bad does it We got the uh, visors, door visors put on, the mirrors. Oh, and I did this one other little thing because, I don't know. I know I got a lot of welding to do, you can't drive it. But that, how cool is that? That's off the Subaru, it says S. Forester S, but all wheel drive. So, you know, it almost looks like it belongs there in a strange sort of way. I think overall, this thing's really cool. It's gonna be a great little hot rod. I made a couple of temporary patches to secure the body to the chassis in multiple spots. I cut the bars out and I also have the seats in it. So really I'm ready to put a battery in it and pull it out under its own power, which should be very cool.
a lot of people have been asking me, send pictures of the interior and this and that. Well, I don't want you to see it yet. It's nowhere near done. Um, this is going to be embedded in the dashboard that I have over there, and I'll show you in a second. But I got to cut a lot of this stuff off to make it fit in here. And you're going to see some of this. But at the end of the day, who cares? You know what I mean? It's all about driving it and having fun. It'll have black rubber floor, the heater controls, HVAC, all the heating, cooling. All of this still works. This all works. So um, this car will have air conditioning even. The cruise, all of it works. So that's one thing. I, let me show you the dash and then I need to take this out on the road. This is the original dash to this car and I'm going to modify it to fit that cluster. This vent nonsense right here, I'm going to put a blank plate over the radio. This hole is the exact same size as the Subaru controls. So it's going to go right in there. Um, we are going to lose the glove box, but we already lost the glove box. Um, I have to close this door and trim some of this. Uh, but ultimately, this is the dash, and it is going in. Um, we're going to make it as normal as, as we possibly can for a car. But uh, let me throw a GoPro on this and take it outside, because this is unseasonably warm today. So the way that this car is put together right now, it's probably not real safe to drive like this, but you didn't see the Jeep Wagoneer when we put that together for the first time. The body was sitting on blocks of wood and a ratchet strap, and we drove it into town that way. So this is actually better than that, but yeah, we did do that. So it seems to be running. Um, let's drive it. He hasn't come back yet. Should we go look for him? for this week's episode because let me tell you something um it almost came apart <laughs> but it's a lot of fun and you can tell the bones are good it's gonna be a lot of fun so as always please remember to like subscribe and share thanks once again and i'll see you soon